I want to talk about the seven principles. Here they are. One, prepare, gather, and manage information skillfully. There is an enormous amount of information out there that we can gather about people, about jobs, about other kinds of issues that relate to our conflict negotiation. We can get it from the secretary, get it from the admin, get it from the paper, get it from the internet. If we do not get our information correctly, we lose power. We don't want to lose power. It's about power. If we had a little bit more time, we would actually go in and talk about strategies of gathering, managing information, figuring out how to use it. This is an hour and a half. We don't have that time. Second thing is understand the role of conflict and negotiation. That is a huge one. Very few people, I think there were two people who raised their hands. They knew what conflict style was. Let me tell you quickly what a conflict style is. I come from a very, woo, very dysfunctional family. We're talking dysfunction in terms of communication was non-existent in my family. I never saw all my brothers and sisters, we never saw our parents argue. Wow, what's so wrong with that? That's pretty cool. Well, the problem is, is when you don't see people argue as you're growing up, you don't have the skills to know what an argument is. And so when I got married the first time and we had an argument, I didn't know what to do. I, fine, honey, whatever you want. I was a classic avoider. Conflict would come up, no thank you. Never saw it before, never dealt with it. I don't want to deal with it, thank you. Whatever you want, you take it. Classic avoiders, passive aggressives, they go together. If a person avoids any kind of conflict, chances are they rarely ever fulfill their needs. And those needs just kind of sit and fester. You get angry, and at some point you just kind of go off. Anybody else kind of a, an avoider? Doesn't like conflict? Kind of lets other people? Not a good thing. If you are an avoider, take a look at it because it's not a healthy way to live. There are ways in which you can change your style. We had some more time, we can talk about it. And that actually we'll get into this in just a moment. Fourth thing is, uh, third thing is position your product or service right from the beginning. Positioning means setting a value to sell. So do it up front. You don't talk about money and then talk about value. You talk about value up front, which is why it's so important to understand what your value is so that you can sell it. Fourth thing, set high goals. What do you have to lose? People who set high goals get high results. People who set low goals get low results. It's an amazing thing. It's called the expectancy theory. You expect to get a lot. Chances are you're going to get it. You expect to get a little. Chances are you're going to get it. Sorry. If you don't set high goals, take a look and see why. Know the full range and strength of your power. We'll talk about that in a little second, a second too. Satisfy customer needs over want. Quickly, customer needs over want. Well, I live in the middle of a city. Right in the middle of a city. <laughs> I'd love to have a BMW or something like that. You know, kind of new cars, be fun to drive around. That's a want. Do I need a new car? No, I drive a 20-year-old, 22-year-old car now. It's got dents in it, and once in a while I come out and look at it, there's another dent, I go, oh, another dent. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, because it matches the other side. Now i got a, you know, it's a, a balanced car. I don't care. My needs are simply to make sure that I have good transportation that gets me from one place to another place that's safe. All my needs are. That's it. Very important to understand what your customer's needs are or what your needs are, specifically what your needs are, because then fulfill your needs. Wants is harder. Last thing is, conceive according to plan. We'll talk about that really quickly. 